All right, should you get out of debt before you retire? Asked Market Watch. Um, the answer, of course, is yes, you should. <laughs> I do get this question quite a bit about paying off mortgage versus saving. I'm dealing with that myself, man. I'm trying to pay off my mortgage. Just talked to my man Jordan uh, over at Creative Planning. He and I used to work together at USAA. And uh, he's like, hey, how are things shaking out? I said, well, I'm trying to pay this mortgage off. He goes, so you're not, you know, you're not, you're not, putting all your money into savings i said no i want this sucker paid off now that may or may not prove to be the best uh, strategy i don't know but uh i tell you what will prove to be the best strategy is my ability to lay down my head at night and say oh i got no debt now you still need cash i tell you man that's a drawback but let's read what alessandro alessandro malito says um let's see what we got here so we got this uh lady there's good and bad debt and calculations to make before retiring with either. Uh, for most, debt is unavoidable, uh, at least at one point during their lives. Whether it should be retirement is debatable. There are two types of debt, good and bad. Yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, broadly speaking, good debt is for necessary, reasonable purchases that will improve your life. I, I don't have any problem with that, saying, you know, you got to take a mortgage maybe a car loan. I mean, I wish we did not have to, but I get it. You know, the, the car loan, which will improve your life to allow you to get back and forth to work. That makes sense. If you're taking a car loan just to show your neighbors, I've made it, everybody, I've made it. That's that's not, that's dumb. Don't do that. I don't think any of us are doing that here in this channel. Uh, such as low interest rate debt for higher education. Or, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's good debt. I, 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 taking debt to go into debt for a, a college degree, it, I mean, don't just throw higher education all in there. There's some parts of higher education that are important. Other parts, the majority of it, which are just a waste of time. Uh, let's see. The latter debt, consumer debt, is a high interest, you know, high payments and whatnot. Credit card debt is, all, is often an example of bad debt. Uh, many Americans think they need to pay it off all their debt before retiring, but that's not necessarily true. All right. Um, when it comes down to the type of debt, the interest rates and whether or not repayments fit into a retiree's budget. Fixed budget, you get that. So if you have a fixed budget and you have fixed income, one of the ways you reduce that fixed budget off your fixed income is have no debt. That is, that's why it's so critical. No debt means no need for a cash flow to pay the debt. All right. So this guy says, Joel Kundik, at Savant Wealth Management, there are a lot of misconceptions about debt and retirement. Largely stemming from times when interest rates were far higher than they are present. Uh, while high interest rate debt should certainly be eliminated, other forms of debt can make sense. See, I completely disagree with that. So let's just say you got you know, $50,000 on a car. All right, we're going to run it for uh, six, six years, which is 72 months. Yeah, 72 months. All right, so $50,000 is our present value, zero future value, 72 months. Um, is and yeah, zero interest rate. What do you think your payment is? Six ninety four a month. Six ninety four a month, my friends. Times six ninety four times what did I say? Six seventy two times. That's fifty thousand dollars a year. So the interest rate is zero. Is that a good debt? No, because that's seven hundred bucks a month. That's more than my first mortgage, by the way. Seven hundred bucks a month. I mean, come on. <laughs> You know, if the average Social Security, as everyone says, is only $1,500, that means more than half of your Social Security is going to pay that debt. But I'm getting 0% interest. Yeah, that, look, and I get it. I talked to the lady the other day. She got a 0%, you know, but they, they can pay off if they want to. Uh, so that's the thing. It's a difference. If you can pay it off, you, know, you don't have to, you know, you can carry the debt. If you can't pay it off, <sighs> Repayment should not cost some of the retirement savings. I've seen people pay off their mortgage, but they have little savings left. And I agree with this. My man, Michael Stroll from Open Advisors. Um, they're opening the relationships. Ah, just joking. It's a joke. Oh, just being funny. It's probably not that funny, but I thought it was. All right. Uh, but I agree with that. It says having little savings left, if you have no debt, um, is, is not necessarily a good thing, too. And that's what I contend with, man. I say, ah, if things went south, where am I going to get my money from? But I have savings in terms of my, I do have investments, you know, enough, not nah, like more, but I, I'm growing them while, so based on growing it and paying it down at the same time. Oh, wait, by the way, Portland Bulldogs, take that Dana Kern. You know who I'm talking about up there in Maine, Daring Rams. No way, dude. Portland Bulldogs. Yeah. I went to 
one semester at Portland High School. And then I went to one semester at Cape Elizabeth High School. And then I went to three years at uh, Blair, Montgomery Blair in Silver Spring, Maryland, just as an FYI. But, you know, I love Maine, so it's fun to uh, bring it back. Um, and uh, all right, let's go back. A mortgage is one of the largest debts a person will have. Uh, not everyone can pay it off before they retire. I completely agree. If individuals and families are less than three years from retirement and mortgage balance can be feasibly paid off prior to retirement, uh, that, that can remain a good strategy. I, I completely agree with that. If you can feasibly pay it off before retirement, you should. If you can't feasibly pay it off that you don't have enough cash flow to pay the other bills, you should. I completely agree. Uh, let's say, again, going back, a key factor in paying off your debt is an interest rate. No, it's not. It's your cash flow. Cash flow is king. Uh, those who are near and want retirement want to continue paying it to the gold years might want to reconsider refinancing uh, if it will lead to a lower rate and lower monthly payment. I completely agree. Um, getting the house expense as low as possible, well, you know, the way to do that is just take reverse mortgage. If getting the house expense as low as possible is the way to go, then a reverse mortgage is the way to go because there is no uh, house expense. Well, you still got to pay your property tax and homeowners insurance. Ah. Talk about principal and interest, principal and interest. All right. And if you have a reverse mortgage, there is no principal and interest. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not about getting the uh, uh, housing expense as low as possible on a, uh, a an interest rate. It's just whether or not you can afford it or not. And I, I got to tell you, man, a lot of times if you have uh, debt, it's going to be tough, tough, especially if you have a fixed income especially if you're relying on the markets to see you through. So anyway, the point being is there's a lot going on. There's more than just some interest rate. And a lot of people say, should I do a 10 or 15 year loan? I said, no, do a 30 year. Hey buddy, coming up. I said, do a 30. If you want to pay it off earlier, you can, but a 30 year allows you to stretch out as long as you can. But if you want to pay it off earlier, by all means do so without question. What are you doing there, Finney? Uh, consolidating credit cards and taking advantage of 0% offers to pay down consumer debt are two uh, things you should do. Um, uh, that's, that's until they, they renege on their 0% offer, which is what happened to me in 2008. I've told you guys the story. I had everything on 0% credit cards. Cause what I was doing was taking my credit card, uh, and using that to find, uh, to fund my Roth. And I had 0% for the life of the loan. So I think I had like $25,000 of 0% interest rates for the life of the loan at Chase Bank and another one, like 13 here and 12. I can't remember what it was, but I remember when, um, one sec. And I've always been anal about making sure my credit rating was high, too. So I remember when the uh, the chaos happened in 2008. All of a sudden, I looked at my Chase statement and said it was 14.99. I was like, what the hell? I said, I didn't miss any payments. I mean, I've been paying more than the minimum. Like, what, what's going on? So I called them up, you know, had to be on hold for 30 minutes. And apparently, I wasn't the only one. Apparently, they were getting inundated with people. Uh, they said, well, if you read the fine print, you'll see that during times of crisis, we can raise it to uh, to market rates. I was like, what? So just be careful. man. That almost sank us. And when I say almost sank us, we weren't going bankrupt or anything. But that was scary because now I had $25,000 at 14.9%. And whereas before, I was making huge payments on the principal. Not huge. I was making payments on the principal every month. 25 times 14.99%. You know, that's uh, 3700 bucks a month right there. So it just, you know, I was paying like 300 bucks a month against my credit cards. Right there is just, it's just not even paying the, paying the interest. Oh, that's scary. I was able to get around that. I can't remember how. I think I cashed out. I think I cashed out everything to pay it off is what I did. And when the markets were down too. But I said, I can't afford 14.99. So even though the markets are down, I said, I'm just getting a clean slate. Uh, let's see, why pay off, a, this is what I don't like right here. It says Todd Smith with level five. Why pay off a mortgage at 3% if your money is earning six or seven? Uh, that's the, uh, uh, that's a Rick Edelman thing. Why pay off the mortgage at three if your money is earning six or seven? All right, so the issue that this drives you up the wall, your money isn't earning anything. It's earned in the future, we don't know what it will be earning, if that makes sense. It has earned XYZ substantially higher over the last 13 years than the 3% mortgage, I grant you. What it will earn is unknowable. No one knows. We don't know. You can project. You can assume. You can speculate. But we do not know. We do know that 3% mortgage interest also has a cost, too, called principal. So it's not just the interest that you have to contend with, it's the principal you have to pay. 
two forms of payments, the interest and the principal. Stop so, focusing so much on the interest and look at the entirety of it. So when you're earning, we aren't earning, we've earned in the past tense. We don't know what we will earn. And if you're like me and you think the markets are going to be significantly lower going forward than they have been historically, then it's not just uh, three to six to seven. It could be three to two, three, three percent interest rate to three. Then you got to pay taxes on the money that I mean, the whole thing. You see where I'm going with this on top of the volatility? I mean, look what happened. Here, man. Nuts. We we're down eleven hundred points to Dow at one point. It came back up ninety nine. I mean, this is. I mean, who knows what's going on? But you tell me that, that couldn't happen on any given two to five year time frame. Of course it could. It's happened many times, man. All right, still the path is not for everyone. Having debt in retirement doesn't always make financial sense. If you have payments for retirement, you need money to make those payments, says Nadine Marie Burns. I like it. A new path financial. If you have payments in retirement, you need money to make those payments. The more money you need, the higher your taxes on your income. Uh, what I'm saying. So Nadine gets the uh she's our jeopardy champion for tonight that's for sure uh consider what withdrawing extra cash during market volatility would do to the potential growth longevity of the portfolios the stress can be minimized by understanding uh the cash flow before retirement make it thoughtful well-researched assumptions about expected cash flow retirement right uh, my point is just don't have any debt you can sleep at night that's all there is to it now if you don't have any debt and you're eating rice and beans you don't have any cash well don't do that either that's dumb but try to be debt all right, love to your thoughts. We'll see you.